Welcome to Rebuilding the Beast, Nicole Buchanan. Buchanan, right? Is that how I say it? Yes, you're one of the few people to actually get it right on the first try. Thank you for joining me. We're going to be talking about something I actually don't really know a lot about. So uh, today I Googled diabetes. Yes. And found out that over 450 million people have diabetes. And still, we all don't really know a lot about it. It's very true. So it's something that so many people have, and it's still, yeah, no thank one really for, knows. For, thank, but thank you for being, you know, so open about this topic. I know it's also a personal topic as well. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody ever has. It helps beat the stigmas. Okay, so before we get into all the that stuff, I'm going to start with a spontaneous fun question, which is, okay. who was the last person you called or texted? My husband. <laughs> <laughs> okay that was the next question is who was that person to you husband okay yes <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit about you tell me about you know your history when were you diagnosed with diabetes yeah I was diagnosed in 1997 um actually four days before Halloween uh, I was four years old um basically my parents thought I had a bladder infection because I had been using the bathroom a lot Um, I was really thirsty, kind of lethargic. So they took me to my pediatrician thinking we're going to take her in. She's going to have bladder infection, UTI, whatever ended up being my blood sugar was sky high. And they sent me right to the hospital where they diagnosed me with type one diabetes. And I was in the hospital for, I think it was like four or five days, kind of a crash course on how to manage it. And then from then on, I just kind of gone with the flow. Uh, obviously, at four years old, you're not old enough to comprehend what diabetes is. Right. Um, what went through your head when you were old enough to realize what it meant? And, and did you have a type, tough time coping with or accepting it? Honestly, as a kid, I think because I was diagnosed so young and didn't really know a difference between life without diabetes and life with diabetes as a kid, I didn't really realized that there was other people out there that didn't live with diabetes so it was just part of my life part of my routine I just kind of went about my day I didn't really care didn't bother me didn't necessarily affect things to an extent that I like hated it until I was in high school college and that's when I started to realize okay this really sucks there's certain things that I feel like other people are able to you know go hang out with their friends on Friday night and do whatever they want, not worry about repercussions. Whereas I'd be like, okay, I'm in college. I want to have a beer, but you know, if I have this beer, is my blood sugar going to skyrocket? Am I going to be okay at the end of the day? So it was more so as I was older and realized that there was a lot of things that were going to come along with diabetes. That is when it started to like really hit me. Can you explain, like I said, we, um, I also need to learn more about this. Can you explain the difference between diabetes type one and two and um, how they both affect daily life? So type one is an autoimmune disease. Basically your cells attack your pancreas and make it to where you don't make insulin. And literally every human being needs insulin. If your body doesn't produce it, you have to inject it. So With type two, typically your body still produces a small amount of insulin and it's not usually enough to suffice. So a lot of times if you have type two, you might take, they have like pills that can help lower blood sugar. Whereas with type one, you you have to take insulin. You have to take shots or you have to use like an insulin pump like I have. So it's like a little tubed thing that you have connected to you at all times to deliver that insulin. So the main difference is just one doesn't produce any insulin Two, there's usually a little bit of insulin being produced. And this, this, the device is connected to you. It's connected at all times when you're sleeping, it's on 24 yeah. seven. And the goal is to measure blood sugar levels. So this actually gives you insulin. This is like basically replacing my pancreas. It's called an insulin pump. And then I also wear, it's called a CGM. I have this patch on my arm. So that is actually what reads my blood sugar. So reading my blood sugar replace this thing replaces what I would normally have to do. Like 
poking your blood, your finger to check your blood sugar. This stays on for two weeks at a time. And just like every five minutes, it takes a reading of my blood sugar. And then the insulin pump replaces shots. So if I didn't have this, I would have to take a shot every single time I ate a meal. I remember um, I had a, there was a coach in college, uh, Mark Davis and his son, Noah, we would always go over to their house for dinners and stuff because you miss home cooked meals. And right. I remember this little kid, he was probably about the same, four years old at the time. And he would always have to get shots in his stomach. Yeah. And I was watching like, oh my God, is this what diabetes is? And, and I always felt so bad for him. When I had surgery last year, I actually had to get shots in my stomach all the time. So I felt that pain. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to see the technology has grown and now you don't have to do that. Anymore. It's changed so much since I was diagnosed. I, I don't even think that the GMs or the things that read your blood sugar were anywhere near being invented or anything when I was first diagnosed. So it was completely 100% on my parents. They were the ones that were every few hours having to poke their four-year-old's fingers and give me shots and wake me up in the middle of the night. And, you know, if I had a low blood sugar, they had to, you know, times they had to like literally hold me down and like force me to drink a juice box because that was the only way to bring up my blood sugar. And obviously if your blood sugar is dropping and you don't bring it up, you, you can literally die. So they had to force it, you to, they had to force you to, what is that like? Cause a lot, a lot of people, you know, I have, you know, I came from Africa and a lot of the problems that we have were with the direct opposite where people couldn't eat. Right. And so what does it feel like for a kid to be forced to eat? Um, it was one of, I, I mean, I think it was probably more so a battle for my parents than it was just, I mean, you know, there's times when you're like, I'm not hungry. I don't want to eat. And a typical kid, typical kid, you're like, fine, don't eat. You'll be, if you're hungry later, you'll eat. But with being diabetic, you know, my parents would give me my insulin and I have to eat. If you don't eat, your blood sugar will drop and it's just, you know, a roller coaster ride from there. So I, I, I do remember them like buying oh, those like chocolate nutrition shakes or whatever. I can't think of the name of them, but they wouldn't be like, here, drink a chocolate shake, like have a piece of bread, something. So I think it was a lot of just them probably giving in and bribing me with stuff that I had shouldn't necessarily be eating for dinner but it comes down to if she doesn't eat she's gonna end up in the hospital or sicker than she is now so yeah we, we we talk a lot about the physical the physical aspect of it but there is a mental aspect to this as well you started off earlier talking about you know in college not being able to do the same thing your friends were doing right um, what can you give me more of an in, insight to the mental um things that you have to deal with um, growing up with diabetes? Like I said, I think when I was a kid, I didn't necessarily realize the full extent of what it really entailed because up until I was probably in, I don't know, middle school to high school, my parents did everything. They were basically my pancreas on the side. They did all of the blood sugar checking. They did the insulin. They did the calculations, everything required of being diabetic. I was just a kid that would stand there and get a shot. And then once that kind of all the parents out there too, by the way, you know, <laughs> yeah. the kids and, and, and making sure that they're okay. Right. I mean, it's, I can't even imagine. I almost think it'd be more stressful to be the parent of a type one than to actually be the type one yourself because I'm a mom myself and I cannot imagine having to deal with that and just the constant worry. But anyways, going back, I think once I had kind of transitioned to realizing the full extent of what it required, it a lot of times would just lead to like diabetes burnout. So like you get to a point where you're just like, I'm so tired of doing this. I'm so sick of this. Like, I can't believe I'm going to have to do this for the rest of my life. And it can really just bring you down and make you feel like everything sucks. And that's why I think it's important to also have a community of people that understand you and realize what you're going through because the mental aspect of it is probably one of the hardest things to work through with having diabetes because it's easy to just kind of get into the routine of you know counting carbs and you know you eventually you just kind of know everything like whatever food you eat has carbs in it and you don't have to think about it and it's kind of like a daily motion that you go through but it's those 
mental thoughts when sometimes you wake up and you have a high blood sugar and it's just like, why today? Why do I have to have a high blood sugar today? Why am I going to feel like crap all day today? And that's the most, probably the most difficult part is just dealing with it daily and like mentally having to think about it all the time. I'm, I'm really proud of you for sharing your story the way you do because yeah. there's a lot of people out there that could benefit from this that could that yeah. benefit from hearing you talk about it right you know, a lot of times when you're in pain you just want to hear somebody else say yo like i, I understand right and you doing that as you're changing people's lives as well so so thank you for doing that one of the questions i want to know is you know tell me about and, and sorry for harping on the, on the low oh, good. tell me about a tough point that you've had a low point and what was it and how did you get yourself out of it? Um, I think probably the biggest thing that I've felt negatively towards diabetes is when I realized how expensive it was. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents, I was on my parents' insurance until I was 26. So it wasn't really a big deal. I didn't think anything of it financially. And then I had my son and I had to go on my own insurance. And that's when I realized that it's nearly impossible I, like I don't know how anybody even affords to have like a normal life with type 1 diabetes because it's so expensive and there was a point where my husband is technically my just my fiance because we've decided that financially and health insurance wise it's makes more sense for us to not actually be married because I'm able to stay on Medicaid which is like state government insurance so I can get everything at an affordable price. We can still live a fairly normal life. We don't have to worry about crunching numbers and sacrificing things. But the hardest part was like me accepting that I, I may never actually be able to get married because of my diabetes and the price tag that comes with it. So I have to remind myself that it's okay. Um, I've worked through it and in the beginning it was hard and it was something that I didn't want to accept. But I realized that at the end of the day, it's just a piece of paper and we've been together for 11 years now. So technically we're married. Everybody calls it my husband. It's fine. But that was definitely the biggest thing that I was like, why can I not have like the one thing that like every girl grows up to dream of is getting married and having a wedding. And like, that's one thing that I've had to kind of let go of and just accept that at least for now and for the near future, that's not something that I'm going to be able to do. Wow, yeah, that's that's a tough thing to to work around, but I'm really it's it's amazing. It's amazing. You would never think that diabetes has this much. We only think about the fact that you have to, you know, prick yourself every once in a while, which is the old yeah, way that yeah. I did. And I didn't know that it affects your life this way. I didn't know how expensive it was. So does that mean the insurance insurance no regular insurance doesn't cover so they, most insurances like right now, as of today, will cover diabetes. It's just the cost that comes with it. So for example, if my husband and I were to get married, our incomes combined would be too much to meet the Medicaid threshold. So I'd be knocked off that and I wouldn't be eligible for like the state health insurance. But my husband's husband's insurance through his work is like for a family, it's like a $1,000 per month premium with a $10,000 deductible. And like, they only cover certain portions of like insulin is a tiered prescription. So it's a higher tier through his work. So they would only cover like 80% of the actual cost of insulin, which sounds like not that big of a deal, but insulin's so expensive. It would still cost me like hundreds of dollars a month for all of the supplies that I need on top of that $1,000 premium plus that $10,000 deductible that we have to meet. So it's like, do I spend all, do we spend all of this money and every dime that I make through my job goes straight to my health insurance so that we can be married or do we just say we're married in air quotes and be able to, you know, live a normal life and have other things that we want and me still be able to have an insurance that covers what I need and be able to afford it. I love the way that you express yourself on social media with your illustrations and the posts on, on, on Instagram. When did you start doing this and how has it helped you deal with diabetes and to spread awareness? 
Yeah. Um, after I had my son, I decided I wanted to stay home with him for the first year just to be able to enjoy all of the things that came with being a mom in the beginning. And after a few months, I realized I was really missing adult interaction. So I decided to start an Instagram and a blog and just kind of like went from there and eventually realized I needed like more of a hobby that wasn't just like sitting on Instagram and talking to people. So I started doing the digital illustrations and eventually moved that into like 100% diabetes focused because I found that it was something that so many people in my situation could really relate to. And it was something that was just different and stood out and it wasn't your typical Instagram post that people just kind of like scroll by. It was, you see a picture of somebody with the same device you're wearing and a quote that you know, really resonates with you and have just found that people were like, wow, I can't believe that you were able to take this piece of art and like turn it into exactly how I feel. And I've connected with so many people and I feel like I've helped so many people not feel so alone and express their feelings and just the way of living with diabetes in a different way. And that's probably my favorite part about it is just being able to connect with other people that have felt the exact same way that I've felt my whole life and other people realizing like I'm really not alone in this there really are so many other people that feel like crap when they wake up in the morning and have a bad blood sugar or can't deal with the price of insulin and it just kind of went from there it's it's really cool because this is what this whole thing is about as well for me um I started off I had an injury a couple of years ago and I would share you know, I went from playing in the NBA championship to being in the wheelchair for six months. And I would share on social media all the time. Yeah, it's like this crazy high to a crazy low. Right. Um, and I would share all the time and I would tell people, this is what I'm going through. This is how I'm fighting through. I'm, I'm you know, just showing them, just them, just showing them me being on a, on a, on a wheelchair or being on crutches. Right. And I call it rebuilding the beast. I'm rebuilding the beast. I'm rebuilding the beast. That was my thing to hype myself up. But other people saw it and it made them excited about their own journeys. It gave them inspiration, motivation. And it started to create this people that would say, oh, I'm rebuilding. So I was like, okay, why don't I, I have had this vision for a long time to start a community where everybody is, they're going through their different challenges. How about we inspire each other? Maybe you don't have any relationship to sports and you can't get motivation from me, but you can get motivation from Nicole and understand that she's fighting her own battles in her own way, we can draw inspiration from each other. So this community is, is really exciting. And I'm excited that my community is joining with yours to, yeah, to support you. it. So thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. So diabetes is, is kind of an invisible disease. Mm -hmm. So what message would you want to share about living with this disease? I think it can just be very easy to hide it and kind of crawl into your own little turtle shell and not let other people see what you're dealing with and the struggles that you're going through and you know like when I was a kid I didn't want anybody to know I had diabetes and I hid it as much as I could like I'd go to the nurse and not tell anybody like none of my friends why I was going to the nurse I would hide my insulin pump inside my pocket so that no one could see it and I don't know that I don't know if I was just embarrassed of it, or I just didn't want people to feel sorry for me or ask questions about it. So I did everything I could to keep it invisible. And I have found over time that while it is easy to conceal, and sometimes that's fine, sometimes you don't want to talk about diabetes, but it can also kind of contribute to just like bringing you down and making you feel worse about it when you can go and, you know, find that community and really talk to people about it. And not make it so invisible and negative because also I think a lot of people see diabetes and like you said pe most people think it's just like oh she just has to give herself a shot she's fine it's not that big of a deal like she still lives a normal life but there's so much more to it than that and it's literally like a 24 7 365 never turns off it wakes you up in the middle of the night it you know it it can ruin your plans it can completely change your day and your mood and I think it's just it, it's important to not let the invisible aspect of it bring you down if that makes is sense. that the advice yeah no, no that's that makes a lot of that makes a lot of sense and, and for anybody who's dealing with a chronic illness 
this is a this is a advice that they can all take. Your my you know let's say you were talking to ten year old Nicole and you were you were trying to guide her to get her to this point. What kind of advice will you give her? I think I would probably tell her to not be so ashamed or hold back in wanting to do the things that she wanted to do just because she had diabetes. I think I was always very hesitant to try new things or do anything different. And I was very, I was kind of like a teacher's pet. Like I I wanted to do everything by the book. I didn't want to stray from, you know, doing anything new because I was afraid if I went and did something like, oh, how's it going to affect my blood sugar? Is it going to go low? Am I going to make a fool of myself? Am I going to look ridiculous because I have to check my blood sugar in the middle of whatever I'm doing? I wish I wouldn't have been like that. I wish I would have just been like, you know what? I have diabetes. If something happens, it'll be fine. It, it, it always ends like 99% of the time, it's fine. And things work themselves out. But I, I was always very hesitant and very cautious. And I think I, there was probably things that I missed out on that I shouldn't have missed out on just because of being that way. That's a that's something that we all I think we all go through as as young adults as teenagers yeah. <laughs> is we're always worried about what other people think. And exactly, so it just stops us from experiencing things fully. Right. Uh, even as adults, we still go through that. Right. Yeah. That's, that's part of this. Is is I hope that if somebody hears your advice they are just snapped out of that trance of wanting to please people and understand that you have to please yourself first. Yes, absolutely. This is my last question for you (laughs) because I want to end on a positive note. What are you most proud of and what are your goals for the future? Oh gosh. I think that the thing I'm most proud of is just how far I've come. And at the end, even though I just said I did, I let myself hold back when I was younger. As I've gotten older, I think I'm proud of myself for not letting diabetes hold me back in any way. I've done things that I never thought I'd be able to do. Like I I didn't know that I'd ever be able to have kids. And I dreamed of being a mom, like from being a little girl. It was like the one thing that I wanted to do so bad was just be a mom. And I ended up being able to have my son and have zero complications and I think that's one of the biggest things that that opened my eyes to even opportunities in the future is just being able to overcome those fears of what I might not be able to do and realizing that I literally can do anything I want to do. That's a, that's a side effect. That's a, that's a thing that can happen is you can, it's possible that you would not be able to get pregnant because of that. Well, a lot of times doctors will tell people that it's not a good idea or that they won't be able to, or that if they do it, it could end in miscarriage, stillbirth. Like there's a lot of negative stigma that comes around it. And I think doctors are usually more hesitant to tell people that they can do it, but I, you can do it. Like I just, I just, if anybody listens to this and like wants to be a mom and thinks having diabetes means you can't, it, you absolutely can. Unless there are other like you know, issues that you have aside from diabetes that may prevent you from that. There's no reason why having diabetes should prevent you from having kids. But like when I was first diagnosed, my mom, one of the first questions she asked was, will she be able to have kids in the future? And the doctor said, well, we'll see. We'll talk about that when the time comes. Mm -hmm. So it was always kind of like in the back of my head, like, is there really something I'm going to be able to do? And it was hard. It was easily the hardest thing I've ever done because it's very, you have to be very strict and very to the point of everything that you do when you're pregnant with diabetes, but it's completely worth it. And it's, it's hard, but it's easily the thing I'm the most proud of and being able to do with diabetes tagged to it. Fighting through everything you fought through, I definitely think that you are a beast. Well, thank and, you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you for sharing your story with me. Um, I'm so excited for, for people to hear these stories. As people always think that you, you need to talk about all these crazy things. It's just daily things that people have to deal with and, and cope with that we need to talk about as well. And so I'm right. really proud of you and I'm very happy that you're, you're being the voice for the people out there who, who need to hear this. So thank you. Yes, thank you. I, I hope somebody hears it and realizes that it's diabetes can have its bad days but there's also it shouldn't stop you and I want other people to realize 
you're not in this alone. We're all in this together and whatever you want to do, you can do it. it. Takes a little extra math, a little extra insulin and shots and whatnot, but you can do it. I've definitely learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you again. <laughs> yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.